Today in Holy Forward, we're going to be seeing what happens when you buff all the major nations, so Germany, Italy, so Soviet Union, France, United Kingdom, USA, Japan, China, and they've all these all these buffs. And today I'm just going to be observing and just see what happens. What I think will happen, I think Germany will win because they'll be hyper aggressive and just take over everyone. Anyways, on to the video. As of halfway through the 1937, things have been going pretty standard. Stuff like the Rhineland, the end of the italo ethiopian War, and the start of the Spanish Civil War have happened. But some, since I'm playing on non-historical, some odd things have happened. Like, for example, the Polish peasant uprising in Slovenia being released as a puppet from Yugoslavia, which is I'd never seen before. And But no majors at war, and they're just building up their armies to repair. Almost exactly a year later, in June of 1938, the Polish uprising succeeded and they took over Poland. Nothing else really happened besides Angelus, which is when Germany annexes Austria, and the French joining the Allies. And, and then also, uh, Yugoslavia kept releasing more puppets, uh, this time Bosnia and Croatia were released, which is never seen it before, at least I haven't noticed it. Tensions were rising as Germany took the Sudan land and got Hungary to join the Axis. And then the Spanish Civil War ended with a nationalist victory. As to, okay, so how it ended was two divisions broke past the front line. They then cut off Barcelona in like the surrounding area and they sieged Barcelona as there's only one division there and they single handedly won the war. They cut. Germany continued to conquer without war by taking the rest of Suzekia, and Yugoslavia released even more as they released Montenegro, Kosovo, Macedonia, Transylvania, and Vojvodina, I don't know how to say that, as puppets, which leaves Yugoslavia with less land than modern day Serbia. Communist Mexico declared on the Netherlands to liberate the Ant Antilles focus and start a faction with Paraguay and El Salvador. This, for reasons I don't need to elaborate on, is very cursed and would be pretty hard for them to fight each other, as they are several continents away, except for a little bit of land. Communist Mexico declared on the Netherlands to liberate the Ant Antilles focus and start a faction with Paraguay and El Salvador. This, for reasons I don't need to elaborate on, is very cursed and will be pretty hard for them to fight each other, as they are several continents away, except for a little bit of land. A lot happened as the USSR and Comintern declared on Estonia and capitulated them, and then they declared on Finland, which is still ongoing as of October 1939. And then the U.S. joined the Allies, and they just mopped the floor with the Bolivarian Alliance. And Castle of Mexico, took, who joined the Allies, took over Mexico. And then Paraguay and El Salvador, became um, they just became democratic. In the span of about months, three India was defeated and returned to the Brits. Finland signed a white peace with the USSR, which is for us now about what they are in the modern day. And then Peru declared on Ecuador, and Manchuko declared on Japan. While Ecuador and Peru signed a white peace and Manchuko got destroyed, Germany did the Danziger war focus and Poland did not give up Danzig, so they went to war. Poland joined the Allies, which are stacked with Britain, France, and America, while Germany got Italy and Slovakia to join the Axis. Germany declared war on Belgium and Luxembourg, who joined the Allies, and Manchukuo joined the Government of National Offense, which consists of all of China besides Vancouver. Then on the Allies, Luxembourg and Poland were capitulated. On the Axis, Italian East Africa was capitulated. Germany declared on Denmark, Norway, and Greece, who all joined the Allies. And then Peru declared war on Chile, who joined the Allies, and the former joined the Axis. Some factions also formed, such as the Northern Defense League, which is just Sweden and Finland and then the Balkan Defense League, which is all former Yugoslavia, except for Serbia, 
which was peacefully annexed by Germany. Then on the Allies, Denmark and Romania capitulated, and then Menkugo also capitulated. Earlier, the USSR started justifying against Hungary, and they eventually declared on Hungary, which caused the access to good war to common turn the Allies simultaneously, like what happened in the real World War II. The USSR was able to push to eastern Poland and the eastern Balkans, but wasn't able to get much farther than that. Italy declared on the Balkan Defense League, and in about two months capitulated all the members and annexed all of it except for Montenegro, which Italy puffeted. The Axis were able to push into the USSR, even managing to take Minsk, which is in Belarus. Modern day. And then Britain declared on Iraq, but Iraq didn't join the Axis, so this kind of got beat up. They haven't officially yet, but they will very soon. And then um, Ireland joined the Allies. The Allies got both Ecuador and Brazil to join the Allies, and then Iraq was defeated, and they stopped converted to Democratic. Not, they didn't join the Allies, though. And then the Soviets declared war on Iran just to get some more land. Nothing much happened except Italy occupied Albania, who then joined the Allies, and then threw capitulated to the United Kingdom. I also accidentally took control of Germany, so like I like just took a break for like a week because I had to go to school, and then I um restarted the game, and for some reason can't like observe so i was like like playing it and not observing it and but it's fine it was only for like about three months and but and most of the divisions had war plans so uh hopefully not it didn't make that much of a difference there was a rebellion in italy and now uh like from like south of rome uh, they've joined the Allies, which is not good for Italy, but it's good for the Allies. The Allies were able to push all the way up to Northern Italy, while the Axis were putting up a good fight, but the Allies slowly made it up, and then eventually it, it Axis Italy capitulated, since there are two Italy's now. And now Italy, Germany and all the small Axis nations are just exposed, and they've like 0.5 troops per a tile on the border, and I think they'll get destroyed, honestly. Let's capitulate all of them, except maybe Germany. But like, Hungary, Slovenia, the rest, gone. The Allies successfully took Yugoslavia, including independent Montenegro, and also Albania. The Axis were being attacked from the east by the Soviets, west by the French, south from the Brits, even north from Denmark, and also a uh, Catholic Mexico declared war on Costa Rica, which, and, uh, Catholic Mexico joined the Allies, even though they're, like, fascist, which is, like, weird, you know, like, Allies still to hate them. The UK pushed into Austria, while the Soviets pushed into Romania, even the Dutch were taking some land. And then Spain joined the Axis, which could be some vital help for them. While the Allies were, st were still doing a lot of fighting and making progress, the Comintern were the ones pushing the most as they were coming in from the east, and they slowly made progress through Poland, then to actual Germany, and on March on uh, May 26, 1946, the German Reich capitulated after the Soviet Union took Berlin. The Allies took Italy, not including Italian East Africa, then historical West Germany plus Austria, and northern Spain plus uh, Spanish Africa. Then the common turn took East Germany, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Romania, Albania, Kosovo, Montenegro, and Macedonia. And then the GOND, which is just the US and China, they, all they did was just take Valencia and Spain. And then the countries that stay independent or gain independence are the rest of Spain, Slovenia, Croatia, Bosnia, Serbia, Ethiopia, 
and Sudan. And then the GOND also got declared on by Catholic Mexico, who should not be declaring wars. And uh, and the Catholic Mexico is in the Allies, so they're gonna they're going to war, which is gonna be a fun war. The U.S. is rather quickly able to capitulate both Canada and Mexico, so there were no m more major threats on their border, except for FS Mulek. Not like major threats, just like the like Spanish countries in the eyes, like Central America. And then uh, the GOND is also making some progress in South America, from like Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay, since they all joined uh, the GOND after Mexico declared on them. And then uh, they were also making some progress from Spain, from like the the one state in Valencia, in Valencia they took, um, and. And then making it in, into France, or actually, like, France pretty un unguarded. And then, um, there's also technically the China-Japan border in Korea. That's hardly changed after, like, seven years of fighting. There's about, like, ten million people have died on that for that. Almost all South American countries have joined this action, the exception being Venezuela. The Allies have Brazil, Colombia, Ecuador, and Chile, while the GOND has... Argentina, Paraguay, Uruguay, Bolivia, and Peru. Also, Bulgaria declared war on Serbia, I guess. Bulgaria, in about months, was able to uh, capitulate Serbia, but they only took two states. Well, I mean, they signed a white piece, I believe. So, Serbia only has one state now. And then, things weren't looking good for the Americans in GOND. As uh, they got like kicked out of Spain, as their territory got taken, then um, Guatemala, Honduras, and a little bit of Mexico uncapitulated, and the Brits even landed a naval invasion in like Florida, Miami. Soviet Union declared war on Japan, who's in the Allies, which sparked another major war. Then the Allies are probably the most popular faction, I and mean, most po powerful, but they probably are more powerful than the GOND plus the Comintern. The Comintern instantly rushed West Germany, and then they took them out pretty quickly. Then they moved on to Luxembourg, Netherlands, and Belgium, which they easily capitulated. Then they moved on to France. It was a little bit of help from the GND. We were able to defeat them. Then they they wiped up Iraq, Denmark, and then the Comintern finally moved on to Italy, which they capitulated. And now uh, the Comintern has to feed, and, and also the GOND has to feed all of the Allies. In Europe, excluding UK, Norway, Ireland, and Portugal, not so Iceland. The war got so bad that even the National Defense Force had to get involved, which are it's literally just Sweden and Finland because their Nordic brother, Norway, no, I, yeah, declared war on them. The common term declared on uh, Sinkane caused him to go to war with the GOND and start a three-way war. So, every faction, major faction, sorry, uh, Sweden and Finland, are at war with each other. It'll be probably more interesting as it's been literally like 10 years since the last thing happened. No, two years, sorry, again. And the common term quickly took out the, the United States and Spain. And also, like, main Spain, Republican Spain, they joined that the common turn so they had like land so that they could like get to portugal and gibraltar and they destroyed them in spanish peninsula was theirs i don't know i'm saying like this the common turn and allies both started conquesting into china with the common turn taking Xinjiang and Qing china and then the allies cap um capturing most of like east china so like around like nanjing close to beijing not yet though also, Switzerland decided to join the Allies, which was a bad idea, as they got immediately capitulated. There was a Swish, Swedish civil war, and the rebels were, were communist, and they joined the Allies, and then the Allies initially defeated the OG NDF Sweden, but then the common turn, like as soon as they annexed OG Sweden, they just got, like, destroyed. And then, um... But they haven't been like re brought back back yet since like I think like the NDA like their faction has to control the land, not like a different faction. 
and then um also Venezuela joined the NDF, and now finally now all of South America is at war and in a faction. The Comintern and Allies both continued to attack the GOND China, and with the Allies taking out the Guangxi clique in Communist China, and the Comintern took out Shanxi. This leaves a uh, GOND China was just like Guangxi. The, the, so technically, Guangxi clique took leadership over the rest of China, and they just rule it now, I guess. Well, uh, and then like up there, I think there's cap capitals like Nanjing or something. Should end the video right here since it's been like 20 years. It's a long time. Let me do a ranking of all the factions. And then, uh, so fourth place, we got the National Front Front, Defense Front, they're, they're cute. Finland's somewhat powerful. I mean, no, it's like not that bad, but still, they're like a drill compared to the rest. And then we got the GOND, pretty strong. We have the US, which is probably the second strongest country. They're, like, okay. they're losing quite a bit of land in uh, South America. Then they're getting almost done in Asia. Asia, so it's not not doing that well. Still not that bad. And then the Allies, I'd say, they've all of Africa, most of South America, and, and a lot, and all of Oceania, and uh, most of Asia too. And uh, they're pretty strong, but probably not as strong as Comintern. As Comintern, even though the Allies have like, if you look at it, more land. I guess Europe is the most important part of the map, and Comintern essentially possesses all of that, and then, uh, uh, Comintern has most manpower and visions, so they're the strongest, and then, uh, they have the strongest country, which is the Soviet Union. And I just hope if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and you watch another video, which, as of right now, I only have one out. But anyways, bye.